York, New York, big city of dreams. New York, New York, big city of dreams. Yo, what's good, everybody? This is Ryan G from the Nick of Time Show. Where we give it a Nick's talk, just in the nick of time. And yeah, as you can see, the fitter can barely fit on my head. The throat is thriving. The throat is thriving. But let's get into it because I know y'all attention spans are short. So since the Knicks got knocked out of the playoffs, Knicks Twitter, y'all are crazy. I'll just say that. Y'all are damn crazy. Y'all are on one. All these emotional responses to a good season for the Knicks is just unbearable. First and foremost, fire Thibs. Why do you want to fire a coach that overachieved with the roster that he has? How many experts out there predicted the Knicks to even make the playoffs? The majority of people thought the Knicks would be a playing team. At most, a team that gets knocked out of the first round of the playoffs. What did this Knicks team do? They made it to the second round of the playoffs. They eliminated the team, the Cavaliers, with Donovan Mitchell on that squad, where a lot of people in the media ridiculed the Knicks for not getting. The Knicks beat that team, got into the second round of the playoffs, and lost to a Miami Heat team that has experience. Jimmy Butler, he's been there before. He's, he's played in the NBA Finals. Bam Adebayo, he's been there for before. He's played in the NBA Finals. Kevin Love, championship player. Kyle Lowry, championship player. And these players in the regular season, it, it's like they were cruising. They weren't even playing like that. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, the playoffs come. All of a sudden, you get championship Lowry. Like, come on now, man. That Heat team is not the same Heat team that the Knicks played in the regular season. That Heat team is different now. That same Heat team dropped 120 plus on the Bucks on by on average throughout their whole throughout that whole series. And the Bucks is a good defensive team. The Heat hung 120 plus on the Boston Celtics, another good defensive team, and stole Game One in Boston. That's who the Knicks faced. It's not the same Heat team. And on top of that, like I said, they have the experience, and they have the coaching. Spolstra, one of the best coaches in the NBA, who's won championships already. Like, come on now, putting in perspective. Look at the Knicks roster. Mitchell Robinson, first time in the playoffs. Emmanuel Quickly, second time in the playoffs. First time playing in the second round. Even the guy y'all like to bash, Julius Randle, second time in the playoffs. First time in the second round. You want me to keep going? Because that's, cause that's pretty much the whole Knicks eight to nine man roster. A bunch of guys who are basically new to the playoffs or barely have any experience in the playoffs. But yet, y'all mad at them for not beating the Heat that have the experience and they have the coaching. Come on now, let's put in perspective. Let's really put in perspective. Thibs, you may not like his coaching style, but the man coaches ass off this season. He's shown this season that he can adapt to change. So why do you want to get rid of that coach? That's number one. Number two, I don't like the treatment of certain players, more notably Julius Randle. And here's why. First and foremost, look, he played bad in the, he played bad in the playoffs. I'm not even going to excuse that. There were times when he played with a lack of effort. There were times when he just couldn't find the basket, honestly. I think what people forget is he came into the playoffs with a bum ankle. We don't know for a fact whether his ankle was fully healed or not. So for all we know, he probably played with a bum ankle throughout the playoffs, and rightfully so, because any player who is All-NBA or an All-Star, knowing that their team needs them to win, they're going to come back even if they're 60 70%. You know, and I think there has to be some respect for Julius Randle because of that. And here's my thing. Like, a lot of people are saying we should trade Julius Randle, get rid of him, and this and that. You have to understand, trades have to make sense not only from a team standpoint, but from a business standpoint. 
Julius Randle may have performed bad in the playoffs, but at the same time, he's part of the reason why the Knicks even got a fifth seed to begin with, with his performance on the regular season. And a player who's all NBA and an all-star, you don't just trade that player for pennies on the damn dollar like a lot of y'all idiots on social media are saying. You have to get actual value back for that player. Fire that makes sense. It has to make sense from a business standpoint as well. Like, for example, I see a lot of mock trades out there for Carl Anthony Towns. All right, number one, this dude is earning pretty much twice the Julius Randle's salary per year, right? Okay, so you want to trade. I'm going off of a mock trade I've seen online. So you want to trade Julius Randle, Mitchell Robinson, Emmanuel Quickly, and like three firsts for Carl Anthony Towns. Another player that, okay, is, is he going to space the floor? Sure. Jalen Brunson may have more space to operate. But again, the main issue with Julius Randle that a lot of people have is that he didn't perform in the playoffs. Carl Anthony Towns is the same player. If you look at his regular season stats and, the, and his playoff stats, he does not rise to the occasion when it comes to the playoffs. So basically, you want to trade a player that hasn't performed in the playoffs for another player that hasn't performed in the playoffs. And then on top of that, he's earning double what Julius Randle is earning. What sense does that make? It doesn't make business sense whatsoever. You know, and my thing is this. I'm of the mindset that every player outside of Julius, uh, every player outside of Jalen Brunson is tradable. But you don't trade players just to trade them. It has to make business sense and it has to make personnel sense. And if the Knicks cannot find that kind of trade for Julius Randle or any other player on this roster, you stick with what you have. You stick with the coach you have and stick with the players that you have because you know what? Players can grow. Coaches can grow. Rome was not built in a damn day. Rome took years to build. I'm in my 30s and I'm still trying to build my Rome to this damn day. And I think a lot of y'all Knicks fans don't realize that. Rome takes a while to freaking build. It's not going to build in a damn day. It's not going to build with one damn trade. You have, to make several, you have to make several moves with this Knicks roster for this team to become a legit championship contender. It's not going to happen over damn night. Stop trying to rush the damn process. That's been the issue with the Knicks throughout all these years. That's why the Knicks only have damn, what, Two playoff appearances since like 2010? Oh, oh wait. I'm not even sure right now because I'm I'm kind of upset at, you know, I'm trying, I'm getting a little bit riled up, but look. The Knicks have always tried to quote unquote jump the process. And it has not worked. The Knicks are actually following the process right now of building a legit team. It's working, and yet y'all want to blow that up. And come up with all these mock trades about we should go for this player, we should go for that player. And a lot of it don't even make damn sense. Why not build with what we have? The Knicks have a young roster of good young players. And a good coach that these players play for. <laughs> to continue to grow. And at least have perennial playoff appearances. And then in the future, there's bound to be a trade that pops up where the Knicks can get their hands on a player that's going to make a true impact on this roster. All I'm, all I'm trying to say is patience. These players are young. Allow them to grow. That's all I got to say. That's all I got to say. Peace. York, New York, big city of dreams. New York, New York, big city of dreams.